So good evening to all of you. For those who have been joining us tonight, virtually from Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and across Asia, thank you so much for turning in tonight, which is being co-hosted by Asia Open Data Partnership, Organization for Data-Driven Application, Code for Japan, and National Information Society Agency. Uh, this is your MC and moderator of tonight. This is Ha Jung Lim. I'm a senior manager of the Department of Open Data and National Information Society Agency in Republic of Korea. So three countries in Asia, um, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, have virtually gathered tonight once again to share each cases fighting against COVID-19. So just for your information, the first webinar, which took place on June 2nd, was mainly focused on perspective from public side that we all share the decisive actions and more of policies took by each government responding to COVID-19. And tonight on the second webinar, we have invited representatives from private sector who actually co-work and cooperated with the government of each country, building a public-private partnership in responding to COVID-19. So obviously the future is not what we thought it would be only a few short months ago. And as all our experience illustrates, um, partners are so important dealing with the pace of change, complexity, and disruptions that are actually becoming the norms. So the rate of technological and business model innovation alone makes it nearly impossible for any single organization or business to do everything itself. So in this context, uh, we would like to elaborate more on the actions that has to be taken by the government for a better response in the future with partners, particularly the private sector. So to that end, I would like to invite five amazing speakers tonight, and each speaker will be sharing how private sector of Taiwan, Japan, Korea have quite successfully responded to COVID-19. So before I officially kick off the webinar, um, I would like to briefly go over with the program of the webinar today. So there will be presentation from each country representative, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and here technology, the sponsor of 2020 Asia Open Data Challenge, will be sharing cases responding to flattening the curve on COVID-19. And then um, I would like to bring our speakers once again for the panel discussion, finding more digital solutions that haven't been touched in the presentations and elaborate more on how we could promote public-private partnership responding to the crisis. And what should we prepare for the post-COVID era as well? So um, I strongly believe that two-hour discussion may seem short, but it would give us all insights to prepare for the post-corona era. So just a couple of um, virtual housekeeping rules, and let me share with my presentation. Um, so we are taking questions from audience as well, and we are using multiple channels to take your questions. So you may submit your questions to the comment section of YouTube that you are watching right now. And Slido, please find event code 42074. And for the Twitter, please hashtag AODC2020. And you may leave your questions in your own language. So staff of each country are monitoring the questions and translating simultaneously. And real-time subtitle um, service in your language is also available this time that on your smartphone, go to this address and follow the instructions and download the app. And go to the link at the bottom of the website and that will directly link you to the webinar. Um, so the translation might not be the perfect one, but it's still, um, it would give you the idea of what the contents are. So everyone is strongly encouraged to submit your questions addressed to any speakers during the webinar. Um, so without further ado, um, I would like to invite our very first speaker. Actually, we have a two representative from Line AI Solution Company. Shinichiro Isago, CEO of Line AI Solution Company, and Evan Lin, technical evangelist of Line Taiwan. So they would like to give us a presentation on lessons learned from COVID-19 activities as Line Corp and tech team of the government of Japan. So virtually over to you, Mr. Isago, the floor is all yours. Thank you for your introduction. Let me share my slide. Does it work? Okay, shall we get started? Yes, you can start. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Uh, hi, I'm Shinshu Risaiga from Line Corporation in Japan. It's a great honor to make a presentation today at Asia Open Data Challenge webinar. Today, I'd like to talk about our journey through COVID-19 related activities by Line Corporation. Let me start with my brief self-introduction. I'm now working for Line Corporation as an executive officer for AI business. And in the same time, I'm working for uh, Japanese government as one of the advisory of supporting CIO, government CIO. You can find me my SNS account by searching SIN135. The pronouncement of 135 is Isago in Japanese. Let me jump into today's agenda. How many persons are using usually line up? Perhaps if you are living in Japan or Taiwan, most of persons are using Line app as a messenger. I know Korean people tend to like to use Kakao Talk instead of Line. Actually, Line is one of the subsidiaries of Neighbor. I don't know why Neighbor couldn't get the market share in Korea. Talking about our support for disasters, the history of Line is important. Line itself came up with the experience of Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. So, so one of the core functions of Line Messenger, Red Flag, is useful for user communication, of course, but super important to confirm their friends and family's safety using small bytes efficiently. So before the COVID-19, we are supporting our local government against various disasters. This is an example of Typhoon disaster support, support chatbot for Chiba Prefecture last year. We already have the tools for operating AI-based chatbots, so it takes two or three days to build up the first version in this case. Speed is uh, super important at the situation of disaster. And uh, uh, COVID-19 spread from around February in Japan. We have provided the same type of chatbot for Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, Kosei Rodo Show, to answer the various questions about COVID-19. We have experienced several uh, impressive and epoch-making projects in these six months. And uh, I'd like to mention my top three. The third place, in my personal opinion, is Diamond Princess. Japanese people may remember the cruise ship arrived at Yokohama. We quickly start a discussion with key stakeholders in government and decided to provide 2,000 sets of iPhones which activated line up for safe communication between passengers and crews inside of the ship and doctors outside of the ship. 2,000 iPhone provided by SoftBank. As you may know, the installation process of line up is a little bit complicated because activation of account is the key for secure communication. So many of our employees participate the, the install work by voluntary base. The good thing for us is moment of, of remote medicine has occurred by our, our activities. I don't know the uh, situation of other countries. In Japan, there are several strong regulations which prohibit the telemedicine supported mainly by medical association conscious of doctors. Again, it's my personal opinion. The second place goes to the massive research for 83 million line users with Ministry of Health. Thinking about the total population of Japan, around uh, 120 million, the number of 83 million is super huge. Actually, the number of 83 million is MAU, monthly active users of line up in Japan. And uh, we have got around 25 million answers. It's a historical big number of internet research in Japan. 
I'd like to thank you for everyone who has answered the, answered the research. While proceeding the massive research with Ministry of Health four times, we have provided more dedicated official account for local governments which support health, health check using line up. And again, uh, it's my personal opinion. The first place of impressive COVID-19 activities provide, uh, provided line corp goes to health check project for returnees from foreign countries. It's not for general purpose, so only few persons know about this project, even in Japan. But the thing is uh, spreading the communication path from text-based chatbot on line up to general phone call using PSTN, public switch telephone networks. Considering the situation of returnees from foreign countries, most of persons cannot use line up on their smartphones. So we provided our AI technologies, speech recognition and voice synthesis and natural language understanding, originally for smart speaker Clover. We have converted these for the purpose of understanding conversations on phone calls to support wild target with natural, rank, natural user experience. The reason why uh, I'm talking about this case as most impressive activity is realizing our passion to hospitality. Human don't need to adjust behavior to system. System should align with humor in most convenient way. Now, I'd like to invite a special guest from Line Taiwan who can speak about our activities in Taiwan. Hey, Bam, can you join us? Hi. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having me, isako -san. Hello, everyone. I'm Evan from Right Taiwan Developer Relations Team. I'm in charge of the technical branding and the promotion and the platform promotion. Let me introduce some activity about open data in Right Taiwan during COVID-19. Next page, please. As the Audrey Tang has mentioned in the keynotes, our government released the open data about the medical mask after February 6. And uh, within a few weeks, there are over, over 100 surveys in Taiwan about the medical mask map. So everyone, everyone wants, to, it's just like the hexagon, you know? Everyone just, uh, everyone using their own, developing their own medical mask map. You by using our the open data, which is provided by our government, so it is very crazy and very encourage people. And in that time, there are over twenty uh, medical mask chatbot in the line. And I would like to share you about some activity about Light Taiwan. Next page, please. In the Light Taiwan, we have a service which is called Lightspot. This is a location-based service to recommend you about a drink, food, or food store you can, which is near nearest from, from you by using your current location. In that time, we also implement our own medical mask map in the, in the live spot. And the user didn't, they didn't need to install any app by just launch their live app, open the live spot, they can find the medical mask they can go into the pharmacy to purchase the medical mask. That's very convenient for the user and used by a lot of users. And the next page, I will show you about the, the light chat bar, how to use the light chat bar to find the medical mask by the light chat bar. As you can see, open the light chat bar is very easy and you can share by sharing your current location the the the, the light chip bar will go into the use the open data from our government and find the medical mask which and buy and the find a pharmacy which is near from you and you can go into here to purchase your medical mask. It's very convenient for the user. They can easily to use chip bar to find the medical mask. In the last page, I will show you about the 
the, the lead. Because during the, the last of people think the the check checking with the chat bar by typing is too slow. So if you someone say you, you can draw in something to the chat bar or sharing something to the chat bar, just like the website, in, in that time, like release a lead, which is called live from in framework in the chat bar, they can help people to to buy drawing or something you are you familiar with to use in a website. You can share in the picture or sharing to the information to your friends. Okay, that's all that's about the live chat bar live and the open data activity in the live Taiwan. Back to you, Isako san. Thank you, Ivan. I believe Lankov can make breakthrough toward to the, the new normal of after COVID-19. Thank you for your attention. That's all from us. All right, thank you so much for your presentations, um, Isako and Evan. So um, I just have a quick question um, regarding the accuracy. So like how accurate AI chapel, like line AI chapel did you use? Do you have any like statistics? Okay, uh, can I share my slide? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. And uh, I actually, I don't have the, the fact data about the accuracy and the satisfaction rate of okay. this chatbot, but uh, I'd like to share additional slides uh, using additional slides. It shows uh, the, the which topic is important for the users? Uh, this case is a typhoon case. And uh, we have already structured the topic, which is the uh, important topic like this. Okay. Uh, this is provided by Ryan and uh, the Council on AI for Disaster Re Resilience. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we already have the data and the tools for uh, resolving the, the, the uh, issues uh, who is suffering from uh, disasters. Mm. Of course, for Taiwan and also uh, COVID-19. Mm, all right. All right, so thank you so much for the, your presentation, Evan and Isago. So um, I'll be inviting you back to the panel discussion later on. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, so now um, let us move to the next um, speaker. So now let me invite a speaker from Korea. We have Kwon Oh Hyun. Um, he's an activist for Code for Korea and founder of Party. And he would like to give us a presentation on civic hackers and government cooperation based on COVID-19 related open data in Korea. So virtually over to you, the floor is all yours. Okay. Uh, I will share my screen. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good evening. My name is Kwon Oh Hyun. Uh, I am one of the maintainers of Code for Korea and currently work at Party Cooperate. Uh, we are democracy activists cooperate. Uh, building open platforms and open toolkits for better democracy infrastructure. Uh, today, I want to share our story about public mask uh, stock apps, uh, how we collaborate in a week to make it happen. Uh, we mean uh, civic hackers, big tech companies, governments, and pharmacists, uh, and all of the players did crucial roles and cooperate like one team. Uh, it was so amazing experience to me uh, to work with these people who didn't meet at all before and make open data, open API, and lots of apps together uh, in a week. Uh, like other countries, uh, Korea government manages mas mask stocks and distribution in early COVID-19 stage. Mm, luckily, uh, next week, our public mask policy for four months will end. Mm, our current total mask production for week is 126 million now. Uh, when our mask stock policy first started, uh, almost at the same time, mask stock apps made by civic hackers and startups also released together. So after one week from mask stock app release, 
uh, mask sold out rate increased from 67.9% uh, to 86.94%. Uh, and people didn't need to stand in line uh, to buy a mask. Uh, we can prepare this open data and open API, uh, also lots of apps together from the beginning of the policy. Uh, because the leadership of governments and cooperation of many players. Uh, for example, when a citizen buys a mask with ID verification at a pharmacy, a pharmacist check his or her ID and input uh, the history of buying. Uh, then this data is gathered into the system operated by government. Then after some data processing, mask stock open data is ready. Uh, this open data is served on the cloud of a big tech company like Naver as open API, and anybody can use it. Then many mask stock apps use this open API real time. You can see some important benefit and role of its players. Uh, government manages data to be reliable. Uh, big tech company uh, provides server servers and other additional API. And lots of civic hackers and startups made freely and easily many apps to distribute. Uh, quick and invisibly. So citizens could be less fear and more trust. At early COVID-19 stage, our government published information and status quickly as many as, as possible and kindly to make people understand easily. They made lots of readable information first, but this data was not machine readable. And also in Korea, many COVID-19 map and information apps made by civic hackers first. You can see the case of live corona map made by people in Jeju Island. And Jeju local government first adapted this civic hackers dashboard uh, to monitor situation. Yeah. This data comes from uh, all of this, this data comes from website of government. So we uh, party cooperate uh, contacted many COVID-19 band makers and asked uh, how are you gathering this data? And then we got an answers like uh, we copy and paste from website of government uh, or we made some crawl to crawl data daily. Uh, there was no common open data API yet uh, because many government people are so busy in the first time. Yeah. So on February 24, we send emails to civic hackers who made COVID-19 map, uh, let's request to our government to deny machine readable data. Uh, these are the mails we sent. Uh, then some citizens answered and joined. So we started to make a proposal about open data and we named ourselves COVID-19 Open Data Alliance from Wednesday. Uh, this is our proposal, and as you can see, uh, we started from background to describe benefits of open data and civic collaboration. And core values like preemptive trust and privacy, consistency, and data reuse. And we listed what data we want, like statistics, confirmed cases, protective equipment, distribution places, etc. Also, we explained the basic principles those data sets follow should follow. Uh, we didn't want to confuse the government. So actually we prepared some real examples for precise data set. You can see what data we wrote as examples. So we sent spreadsheets as example also. So even if we don't know government has a mask stock policy plan yet, we can suggest this data set because of our CB hacker friends in East Asia. We already talked with our civic hacking friends in Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. We heard the mask case of Taiwan, and we shared this story to Japan and Korea already. I want to show some gratitude and friendship to our Asian uh, civic hacker friends now. <clears throat> anyway, after we preparing a proposal, we sent this proposal to our government people in various routes. And we wrote a formal citizen suggestion into Gwanghwamun, who first street, a uh, citizen participation platform operated by central government. Uh, yes, it was first Monday after we gathered as COVID Open Data Alliance. Luckily, our government was already preparing public mask policy at that time. On Thursday, they announced the public mask policy will begin from March 6, yeah, Friday of same week, and two masks for one people in a week with ID verification. 
on the same time, same Thursday, many players gathered into the Blue House, yeah, our president's office, uh, to discuss how to make API and apps possible. And on Friday, a public mask data API specification came out from National Information Agency. Uh, you can see the first document we received. It was a simple technical specification, but we can start uh, share this specification and start to develop apps. Yeah, we COVID-19 Open Data Alliance also announced it. Uh, Mask Stock Data API will be released to developers' communities. Then in a day, uh, more than 100 developers joined to develop Mask Stock apps. So on the same day, we made COVID-19 Open Data Handbook to guide people. Uh, this is the image of our handbook, uh, which describes how to join community, how to contribute to this guide, how to use Mask Stock API, how to register your app quickly, etc. At the same time, uh, National Information Agency and some big tech company like KT also provided cloud servers whoever wants to develop a mask app. So we also add some guide about how to get a cloud servers, yeah, etc. Uh, uh, from Friday to Sunday, uh, more than 150 developers made apps uh, simultaneously then test the API together. So we handed this feedback to government, uh, mostly national information agency. Also when there are some changes or improvements in API, we changed our handbook and delivered these changes to developers in real time. And developers shared their tips and many ideas together. Uh, one of the idea was when, uh, was when a citizen started using app, App shows a common notice like, oh, let's say thanks to pharmacists. Yeah. So, and many developers adapted this idea together. Uh, on next Tuesday, government officially announced the mask stop uh, open data API will be released uh, on Wednesday. So, on Wednesday, lots of mask stop apps developed by citizens released together at eight o'clock together. Uh, as you can see, we use the same API endpoint altogether operated by neighbor. Uh, 90 million API calls per day occurred and 7 million maximum calls per hour on first day. Yeah, lots of apps were developed, but because so many people want to know stock status, apps made by civic hackers were used widely and respectively. So, but like, like data API were provided by big tech company neighbor, uh, mask apps also were on the cloud servers provided by tech company like KT. So app and API services were quite stable, even though it was the first day. Uh, this is the whole timeline that I explained. Yes, just two uh, to three weeks. And development is only taken by a week, actually three or to two or three days. And so many government people, tech companies, and CB hackers collaborate like one team. And also, I was in Japan, uh, quarantined the, during these weeks, only collaborate through online communication. Yeah, my home is in Digata. Yeah. Uh, this is my lesson as a CB hacker. So I think in an uncertain situation, the fastest solutions will come out from citizens. A lot of citizens is key in overcoming COVID-19. And if you provide better open data with better infrastructure together, more citizens can participate easily. Young students and people who just start learning programming made mask stock apps in two days without difficulties. And citizens along the civic hackers also felt similar efficacy when they used mask stock apps made by their friends. And they trust their neighborhood and government more. And we, uh, COVID-19 Open Data Alliance is now became code for Korea. We try to make some network uh, of civic hackers. In Korea, lots of civic hacking communities already exist, but we didn't connect it well. So we are trying to small uh, communities to work together and also connect governments and companies like these uh, ex ex examples. 
So we are in just a new beginning now. Yeah, thanks for hearing. Yeah. All right, thank you so much for your presentation. And um, I would like to invite you back to the panel discussion later on. So thank you so much once again. And um, before inviting the speaker from Taiwan, just um, once again, reminder for the viewers, um, please find us at the Twitter, AODC2020, and also find us at Slido, uh, event code is 42074. So feel free to leave your questions at any time to any of our speakers. Um, so now um, I would like to invite a speaker from Taiwan, Tim Chen, Vice President of Organization for Data-Driven Application, and he would like to give us lessons learned from COVID-19 activities, creating a data-driven desktop transformation in public and private sector. So virtually over to you, Mr. Tim, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Tim, and I'm from the uh, TMS Technology. Prepare my presentation. Okay, yeah. Today I want to show you some uh, idea after the COVID-19 and uh, how to create a data-driven uh, digital transformation in public and the private sector. My name is Tim and uh, the president of the TMS Technology. I'm also the vice uh, chairman of the Taiwan ODA and my company is focused on the intelligent transportation service. I'm also be the open data hack song a judge and uh, be the mentor of the staff new company. I, I think uh, for the COVID-19 and uh, we now have the full impact after COVID-19. Number one is the reduced uh, the uh, 18, uh, 18 of the 19% of the traffic jam. The second one, because the uh, uh, traffic jam is the reduced and the air quality will be improved. The third one is the, the scientists can be detect a very tiny earthquake because of the reduce of the ground violation. And uh, the fourth one is the, because people stay at home, so family violation and the divorce is increased. So I think this is the image and we can see in all of the world. And uh, the second one is the image from the satellites. And uh, you can see the yellow, the yellow point and the blue point. Why is the yellow point and blue point? And uh, as, as the first one speaker from the Japan, and uh, we all know have the closer information is the uh, diamond princess. So this is the point is the all of the cruises. But why is the uh, shipping on the ocean? Because in the in in the uh, in the land, all the all year sto uh, storage tank already full, so the cruiser need to carry out a lot a lot of the oil and shipping on the ocean. This is the fam uh, sixth brand, and uh, we are very famous, and uh, they also have the serious impact uh, from the COVID nineteen. So they cross uh, a lot of the store, and uh, some of the production had to be uh, stopped, has been stopped. But lots of the company have the stand, have the stand. They all have the huge ground in the e-market. So after, co uh, after COVID-19, and we have the three opportunity. So for government side and the private side, and we have the three opportunity. The first one, long contact economic. The second one is the unmanned production and service. So some kind of like robot, some kind of autonomous vehicle. And the third one is the data driven application. So in Taiwan, our government, we push a lot of the e-payment system or mobile payment system. So after COVID-19, our government pushed the, uh, a, a lot of the store and a lot of the public transportation they need to uh, they need to use the mobile payment. So in Taiwan, we still have a lot of the uh, mobile payment company. And uh, NiPay is the Taiwan very popular. 
And uh, the other one is the uh, long contact service. It's the Taiwan World Dream. They just re uh, remove their entry system. They use the first recognition and the, the infrared uh, temperature detect. So they can keep their members and be exercise very step. Last month, Taiwan uh, have the reopened, but we have the new world we call reverse spending. So a lot of the people shopping and a lot of people and go to the uh, shopping store and have a shopping. And uh, uh, this image is the Taiwan because and in the last month and uh, we have a four day holiday in Taiwan. In our national number, uh, number five, we have the 32 hours always traffic jam. This is the very important, but a lot of the people, they give up their tours because of the traffic jam. So we cooperation with our government because and the, how to avoid and people and uh, crowd in the, in the same area. So uh, we cooperation with the Taiwan telecom company we call Zhonghua Company. And uh, we use their cellular, cell phone data. And uh, in Taiwan, we have uh, uh, collect the 400, 400 POI area. So we detect the, the area and uh, every, every 10 minutes, we use the cellular data. So we, if uh, in this area, they have a very cloudy and uh, we use the red, and we do, use the red point to detect it. So people can get the information very easy and uh, to understand and uh, I want to go to the, 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 the area or not. The third one is the, um, in, in our government and uh, in the next five years, we need to pay uh, $240 billion to improve our, our transit. Yeah. So uh, in the next five years, all of the Taiwan, uh, all the Taiwan bus, we will, be, we will uh, transfer to the electric bus. And uh, we also have the mobile payment and uh, we need to the data-driven management. And uh, the, the other one is that in Taiwan also have the, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the law, we also have the detector and the CCTV. So we can get the data easy and uh, get the real-time data information, but it's not enough. All the data is a 2D dimension data. So, in the future, we also hope we can cooperation with the Zhuang solution and we can get, get the real-time data with the 3D dimension. So we need to build up the 3D uh, traffic control center to monitor the data and uh, to make the right decision. So we, we know the data is very important. So how to build up the data-driven economic is very important. So this is the uh, the plan and that we cooperate with our partner, we, we, we hope to build out the Taiwan Data Bank in this year. So company, they trust us and uh, they provide the data into our database and uh, we can store the data and the use the data. In the meantime, and uh, we can as a bridge, bridge and uh, to provide the data and the selling data to other people. And uh, we also have the uh, technology capability, and uh, we can use the data, remix the data to add the data value added, and uh, to provide the data service to our to other company. So this is our our, our goal. So we are a, a easy way to get the data from the open data, and uh, we also persuade some of the private data. They can provide their private data into our database data bank. But how to run the data bank very well, it's very important. We need to uh, trust community. So we need to uh, third party uh, trust com uh, community first. So in, in, in Taiwan, we, in ODA, we build up the trust community and uh, some of the people and uh, from the data science, security, system architecture, lawyers, and the people, uh, they uh, contend the, and uh, trust community. They can monitor the data bank. They can, uh, they can monitor the, the data bank and uh, they can teach in the data bank and uh, to let 
all the data is non-private data. So a lot of people, a lot of company, they can cooperation with the data bank and they can buy the data and they can use the data to act data service to sell in the data. This is our business model and uh, we collect the data well and uh, we have a uh, interest method and uh, we also cooperate with uh, other company and uh, we have the data analyzed and uh, how to get the data to value add it. And uh, we earn, the, earn some of the money, we can share the profit share to our data provider. Okay, this is our, our sharing and uh, hope everyone is stay safe and keep moving beyond. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, you so Team much. Chan, for your presentation. And um, I just have a quick question from the Slido. That, um, yeah. like, since your own company is more related to transportation, so would you yeah. like to share with us like what plans does Taiwan government get to promote the autonomous vehicle services? Do you have like any ideas for it? Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, Taiwan government they do a lot of the the, the budget to support the autonomous vehicle. Now in Taiwan, we already have the five project in in the different city city country yeah but um, in in taiwan and uh, now we will be because in, in taiwan in taipei taichung and kaohsiung we already have the subway and the light train but now and uh, we, we we all know the subway with need cost the cost is very high so we use a new idea we call all the alternative rapid transportation and the use the autonomous as the light train in Taiwan. So they have the they have the cross road and uh, they use the autonomous vehicle bus and uh, driving on the on the cross road. Yeah, like a light train. Yeah, but the cost uh, is a cost down and the, the building time is the can be set. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right, thank you so much. And then um, I will be inviting you back to the panel discussion. So thank you so much for your presentation. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, so now, um, let me move to the, our very last speaker, but definitely not the last one. Um, so we have uh, Michael Chung. He's a director of strategy, portfolio, and operation management, North Asia, Region Asia, Pacific strategy, and data organization, Here Technology. So just for your, your information, like Here Technology is a sponsor of 2020 Asia Open Data Challenge this year. So he would like to give us on um, solving COVID-19 challenges and opportunities with location technologies. So virtually over to you, Mr. Michael. So the floor is all yours. Thank you, Hejong. Let me share my screen now. All right. Okay, hope everyone can see the screen. Hi, right, thank you, Heijong. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone wherever you are in the world. Um, I sincerely hope you and your family are keeping safe and uh, healthy and well during these uh, challenging times. My name is Michael, and I'm responsible for our strategy, portfolio, and operations for North Asia region. Now, COVID-19 has definitely changed our lives upside down, and it has also taken lives across the world. And it also has brought the world economy down as well. So tonight, I really appreciate the time to share a quick update of Here Technologies, how we are responding to the COVID-19, and also our plans for this year's uh, Asia Open Data Challenge. For those of you who hear Here Technologies for the first time, we are formerly called NAPTEC, and we specialize in building the 2D digital database with full co global coverage, and is used in four out of five navigation software in the world today. Now, in 2015, German OEMs acquired us to build the first high-definition map for autonomous driving. Now, over time, we see that location data is so important that can help solve many market problems in many industries and also smart cities. And in the last few years, we have created the first location platform to help enable open location ecosystem. And we have attracted many tech companies as our shareholders and investors. And most recently, as you know, we are very proud to have Mitsubishi Corporation and NTT as our investors to further accelerate the use of digital technology across many industries in the Asia Pacific region. 
Now we have 30 years of mapping experience globally. We have uh, always believed that location data is the core of solving issues that we face. Imagine if we know where people and things interact with each other in real time. And with these insights, we can help government to manage the traffic flows of transportation systems in cities. And we can help people we have to have a greater awareness of our surrounding to keep our citizens safe, especially during a pandemic like now. Now, location data is no longer just a map for a typical consumer to move people from point A to point B, but it can create insights to help us reduce waste. And we all know that time is our most precious resource to react and respond to any crisis. Now, the current pandemic has proven the fact that time and technology are two critical factors to fight this dangerous virus. We all appreciate the fact that it has also speed up the need to embrace and use technologies to do many things in our life. Now, one of the things that we do with regards to COVID-19 is to expand the use of location technology to help minimize the time to respond to an outbreak. Now, the faster we can detect and locate who get infected, where they get infected, and who was around them at the time and where they have been to. If we know these moving patterns in real time, and using technology, we can respond quickly to get the infected cases and also inform our community to take measures to protect themselves. And once we identify these cases, we need to decide very quickly which hospital they should be sent to for emergency treatment. And this is where knowing the availability of hospital beds, the number of staffs and the equipment is critical to save lives. And during this crisis, I believe the most commonly asked question in healthcare is the location of ventilators. If the ventilators have GPS tracker, with software and feedback loop, we know in real time where they are, and we can combine this data with other types of data like the patient's conditions at the time, doctors can quickly assess and also distribute these ventilators among the cities or within the cities. Now, obviously, they, many people are concerned with uh, the privacy, right? Now, when the COVID-19 outbreak happens, location data becomes an important factor to prevent and prolong safety. Many people now understand that for certain use cases, sharing certain types of personal data in an anonymous way may be the only way to help protect and to help in contact tracing. Now, in the post-COVID world, data tracing and data sharing will become a new norm because we all now realize that you know, the benefit of sharing this data can help us save lives, but it also can help us to ensure business continuity during the crisis. The more important thing for us as a consumer is we want to be in control of our data. Now, whether we want to be seen or receive services, we must have the option to opt out to any services that we don't feel like sharing our data. As an app developer or service provider, you need to give the options for consumers to control their data so that you can, they can feel more secure as they use your services. And there's no doubt that to fight this pandemic, we need to balance data security, privacy, and the use of technology with public welfare and for the greater good. Now, one of the things that we do in Southeast Asia is partnering up with a company uh, to create a human care app. It is an end-to-end -end solution that allows citizens to really track uh, symptoms, report symptoms, and government can use this data to assess next actions using analytics. This is a very good collaboration between government and businesses to fight COVID-19 and even future pandemics. Of course, we need to comply with local government policies and also the ethical process of data collection. At Hue Technologies, we embrace a company culture called the Give Back. Now, when the COVID happens, we created a web application called the Heal for Life. And it is an app that helped German healthcare departments to request and exchange medical equipment and resources such as beds or ICU equipment. And it has an optimal route calculation tool that allows the fast exchange of these resources. And it has a database that shows which hospitals are ready to receive COVID-19 patients. Now, another example of giving back is the Here We Go Deliver app. We recently launched in Australia and many parts of the world. It is free of charge to support small and medium businesses. 
during this crisis, if you own an SMB and you take an online order, you can easily put your orders into our Here We Go app, and the app will have predictive analytic tools to provide you the fastest and optimum way to deliver your products to multiple customers in one delivery. Now, this allows business to easily optimize their delivery with their current employees without software or implementation costs or even commissions to third-party delivery service. Now, most importantly, it helps them to continue connect and serve their customers. At the same time, minimize the short-term financial impact during the lockdown period. Now, we have a family restaurant where we go to always, and they tell us that in the past three months, they've taken more delivery orders than their dining businesses. So those are some just of the such few examples where we, we are using location technology and data to help government and businesses to fight COVID-19 as a whole. Now, as a company, we firmly believe there are, you know, in any crisis, there comes opportunities to collaborate and innovate together. And think about the post-COVID business world where business are now implementing work from home. And this means there are opportunities to manage and optimize how people during the day move around the cities and how businesses can offer services to the needs of the citizens. So the use of location data is even more prevalent than before. If we think about our own lockdown experience in the past three months, technology and software have become so vital that to ensure that we can continue with our personal and professional life, whether you are a student, employee, stay-at-home mom and dad, or even senior citizens. Now, the use of app is becoming more important than before, and there's an urgent need to start changing and adopting to the way it is going in, into the future. And we are very committed to support our community to fight this COVID-19, collaborating with events like this, and we encourage you to sign up because we need your software skills to create meaningful apps with the best reality index for here technologies to enhance people's lives in the post-COVID world. And lastly, many predicted that this will not go away, uh, but we can still enjoy life for the fullest, right, in the new normal, and we can make life, you know, a safer and better place to work, to play with the use of location technology. And we believe that an open location system around location data is the most meaningful thing that we can collaborate on for our future. Now, I really miss visiting your beautiful country, and I hope that we can do this event physically in the near future. So I wish you all the very best. Take care, stay safe, and always stay hopeful. Thank you very much. Hey, Jong, I hand it back to you. All right, Michael Chung, thank you so much for your presentation, which I found very fascinating. And um, I just have a quick question from the audience that like, um, what other use cases do you see will be helpful for citizens in the post-COVID-19 era? Do you have any idea? Yeah, um, I think we feel that there are many possible use cases that we can think about that can utilize location data for services that are helpful for citizens. Um, let me give you one example. So, for example, uh, in the healthcare, the successful use of data and tracking personal devices for healthcare provision, it can be a turning point for wider adoption of healthcare technology at scale. Now, we have applied technology to manage COVID-19, but it's only a small part of this bigger potential. Mm -hmm. If we can expand the use of wearable technologies that tracks respiration, heart rate, temperature, we can allow early and personalized intervention for thousands of patients and also improve resource allocation. For example, like health insurance companies and city agencies, they have seen how technology can use to facilitate early intervention and improve service delivery and be ready to expand the adoption to even day-to-day -day healthcare provision for the long term. So that is one. Another example is uh, transport agency, uh, where you heard Tim explain as well. If we can use passenger data anonymously to monitor lockdown compliance, if we can simulate the contact modeling between people uh, in response to COVID-19, and using data analytics, I think those are the things that we can help to even provide personalized transport information to people and also managing the traffic and, and parking, right? So. Of course, to capture all this, uh, it has legal implications like data privacy. 
but as I presented, I think many countries now realize that you know some data collected for one use case cannot be used for another. So we have to be careful when you know when we collect the data and see what what kind of data can be shared and for what kind of use cases. So again, there are many many examples that we can think of. Right. But those are some just examples uh, that I can share for now. All right, thank you so much for your sharing thoughts and ideas. And uh, why don't we just um, discuss more and elaborate more on the panel discussion with other speakers. So thank sure, you thanks. so much. Um, and I would like to invite all other speakers once again for the panel discussion. So is everyone with me? Okay, so that's like a six of us. So um, we have like a Shinichiro Isago, CEO of Line AI company from Japan, and Evan Lin, technical evangelist from Line Taiwan, and we have Ohyun Kwan, activist of Code for Korea, and we have Tim Chen, vice chairman of Organization for Data Driven Application, and we have Michael Chung, director of Here Technology as panelist. So thank you once again for joining with us. Um, and um, before we kick off, I would like to briefly summarize the presentation that you delivered for the viewers that might just who got in. So Isako and Evan from Japan, so they have shared us the case providing support for the passenger of Diamond Prince uh, cruise ship co-working with the South Bank, so providing official account with the phone provided. So passengers could have made like a medicine reservation and mental care and telemedicine with doctors outside the cruise ship, which I found very fascinating. And massive health research using line apps were done successfully. And HealthShark AI chapel for people returning from foreign countries were also developed by line. And let's move to the Korea. So Ohyun um, has given the presentation on mask apps developed uh, by um, civic hackers and startups. So there was this great collaboration work with designated mask sellers and government who released the state, uh, mask sales data in API and clouding companies providing um, stable servers and civic hackers and start startups were successfully developed the services in quite short time. So it was like actually CB hackers who took the very first initiative in this whole successful process. And um, Tim Chan from Taiwan, um, he has given the presentation on actual impact of COVID-19. He also shared like opportunities that we have, like which were non-contact economy and unmanned production and services where he also shared like the progress of ongoing projects which were intelligent digital bus and drone applications and Taiwan and data bank, which data I bank found very awesome. interesting. And lastly, uh, the, definitely not the list, uh, Michael Chung from Here Technology, so, um, our sponsor of the year has pointed out that like location is at the core of solving our current COVID-19 crisis. So here technology has implemented a number of projects flattening the curve on COVID-19, um, like apps using here data hub to store and update the data on hospitals in real time. And the other one was like a Rego delivery service that helped local business overcome COVID related challenges and SME owners to easily operate their own delivery services. Okay, so going so back to our discussion, so I basically invited all the panelists to the um, sticky notes, were called Mira, uh, which I'm about to show you. So I hope everyone can see my Mira screen. So I've shared some questions in advance and all of them share their thoughts and ideas. So I would like to go through the of ideas the panelists have posted in here. So this is the first question, just let me. So this is the first questions that I've raised. So I've asked like how the world in post corona era will be. So like if we look at the life sections like like this one here, like obvious things we can see like less eat out and less shop out and more life online and social distancing and mask all the time. And if we look at this business section, 
um, when the corona pandemic erupted, like business had to change. So they had to increase the speed of decision making while improving productivity using technology and data in new ways and accelerating the scope and scale of innovation. And panelists have put their ideas on the business that would most likely to be in shape in post corona era. And let me start with team. So team from Taiwan has put AI and data-driven opportunity. And can you explain more details on your ideas, team? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and uh, I, I just as my presentation, I have uh, uh, I have a uh, um, I have a uh, example, and uh, we're doing the one night set app with the, my government. Yeah, and in this case, we, uh, we our government hope can awareness our people, and uh, this area is very crowded. But they had a, a lot of the a lot of measure. The first one and the uh, when the people into the area and uh, the area is also crowded and uh, we have, we send the short message to everyone. So everyone get the information and uh, they will be very afraid. So it's it's not good way and uh, to remind our our people. So next one and uh, we cooperate with the several people, uh, tele, uh, tele company and uh, we use the their serial serial data and the use of the AI training and the, to know how is the crowding of the, this area. And uh, we we also have the two way and the first one and the, we uh, we just use the test one one month data, the average data. So the average data is not very clear. So uh, we provide the information to everyone. Everyone is not very uh, complaining about the information because and they say the, the uh, the areas is so empty, but you send they get the uh, information and uh, they say this is crowded. So this is I, I think the world is different. So we also we build our model and uh, we collect the less uh, less one year uh, information and uh, we also find a pick out number and uh, the average number and uh, we reverse our data into the service. Yeah. So now the data, the, the, the service running in Taiwan is very smoothly and uh, a lot of people use the data and uh, when they get the information in the, in the area and uh, very crowded and uh, they will be go to the area. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your comments and let us move to um, next comment. Um, Isago. So um, here's Isago's sticky note from Japan. And can you elaborate more on your idea of OMO everywhere in the business section? Sure. I read that most of guys have good understanding of OMO, online modes offline. Every kind of offline shops and services are suffering from decreased sales and profits. So they have to think about shifting to online world rapidly. Retail shops shift to electric commerce, eating restaurants shift to delivery and so on. Uh, Online services through smartphones will be the main touch point for every industry. At this timing, we have just launched Line Mini Program. It's, uh, it's similar to Mini Program in WeChat. It's useful for business owners to make the new touch point on Line app. Through this kind of process of spreading into every corner of society, Line will be able to contribute for boosting the shift towards OMO world. Is there any comment from Eva? Yes, uh, just like the light test, we have a taxi service. It is, uh, we also use the light taxi or light spa, which is the online merge of light because you can order the meal or you can find your, you can order the taxi from your cell phone and uh, you, or you can set the food from the, your light app. It's also a uh, example for the online merge of light, I think. Mm. All right, so thank you, Isago and Evan. And let us move to Ohyun's memo. So he has left um, on this award. So can you explain more about your idea, Ohyun? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I think 
uh, we cannot postpone making digital world better. Uh, we have to live on this new world, but in this new world, we don't have enough cultures, policies, and experiences. Especially in safety and trust issue, we need more rules, platforms, and cultures to protect people from online harms and provide more power to people. So we need more collaboration tools and more digital commands. Those are open to all people, uh, accessible universally, I think. Yeah. Uh, right, right. And also, um, in that sense, Michael has also put like a virtual commands increase. And can you just add some more ideas on your notes? Yeah, uh, hey Jung. On that note, I just want to share two personal perspectives of why I feel that virtual communications will be increased and critical in the new post-COVID working world. Now, first of all, COVID-19 has pushed companies and workers into new ways of working. Um, the lockdowns around the world have forced many people to work from home, right? And it has accelerated the use of virtual meetings and remote working at a very unprecedented scale. Now, working from home is a concept that somehow is more comfortable to adapt to in the Western cultures. Uh, but still, it has uh, presented some challenges, especially in Asia, uh, when you know, we value more face-to-face -face and non-verbal communications. is very important for business engagement when uh, actual meanings of the conversation actually lie in the visual cues of the body language. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this is a soft skill that you know, I think everybody would embrace. And there's a saying that a person needs to be seen, not heard. And working remotely, sometimes, you know, there's a tendency and perception that when someone is out of sight, they are sometimes out of mind. And uh, emails and audio comms alone are not enough. Um, video conferencing has the advantage because of all these visual cues, and it helps us to give us a chance to enhance the conversation with co-workers, with partners like ourselves, face-to-face, and also help to reduce the sense of isolation among teams during the lockdown. Uh, it feels more personal, uh, especially when it comes to you know coaching or influencing and discussing sensitive topics. Now, secondly, is to date, it has been reported that millions of people in the global workforce have lost their jobs now due to the initial impact of COVID-19. Now, for those of us who are you know fortunate to have a job, we should also use the downtime to start developing what I call you know virtual presence, which is a very popular term now. And I think this is one of the top soft skills to acquire and master, whether you're a student or whether you're employees and, and what, whatever, right? And, and working well when the economy recovers. Um, every business friends that I've talked to about their future hiring outlook and performance appraisal, almost all of them says that they will be using video conferencing and, and video as a means of face-to-face -face communication. So. Uh, I believe the ability to communicate, to collaborate, and lead teams virtually will be one key skill to differentiate uh, ourselves from the millions of people desperately looking for jobs. So uh, virtual communications will be here to stay, uh, whether you know we like it or not. Uh, so it's worth to have worth every effort to not only be comfortable in it, but uh, if possible, master at it. And I believe this can be overcome. Thanks. Right, right. I totally agree on your idea. And the, in that context, then let us move to the logistics. Um, so Isaku from Japan, um, he has left a memo on more D2C, like direct to customers, I guess. So like, um, just to add a quick comment on Isaku made. So it's like obvious that business are seeking to cut off the retailer. And the number of business launched like new D2C platforms to preempt the future disruptions. So like um, allowing the business to trade without retailers. So business now have to devise like new methods to reach users, consumers as like consumption habits as people's everyday lives and routines suggest to what we call like a stay at home approach. And so uh, can you just um, add some more ideas that you have made? Oh, very uh, D2C means uh, direct to customer. Yes, All that's right. right. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I love acronyms because it's easy to explain the concept in the diverse situation with raw context. Uh, anyway, uh, direct to consumer will be the new normal because business, business owners can connect to their uh, prospects and the customers directly using SNS, YouTube, and uh, live commerce services. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, the value of logistics may shift to aggregator or platform to consolidate or product information and the customer's interest, I know, I guess. So uh, I'd like to add one more thing, share okay. delivery. It has already become common in Indonesia and Thailand, brought by Gojek and Grab. In Japan, uh, Demaikan and uh, also Uber Eats are currently de delivering food only by con contract-based staff, but in near future, uh, they might be able to deliver everything using the shared delivery mechanism capacity. That's my idea. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So I think like we can actually like link to the idea that Tim has mentioned in his presentation, AI and data like driven opportunity. They like a, AI could be ideally like a place to help business overcome the challenges that all of us has mentioned. Um, like AI po um AI power V of users and transactional and behavioral like data can help business to provide better and personalized personalized services, I think. So, and um, for the last comment, so Michael has built like different modes of transportation and delivery for social distancing. And I think this like also links to the team's presentation that like autonomous bus and the drone application. And can you too like just add some more ideas to it, Michael? Yeah, sure, hey Jong. Mm -hmm. um, so I think today the, the most common ground transportation for order delivery, for example, uh, is using scooter or bicycles, right, or cars. Right. And this has human interactions in throughout the whole process. Mm -hmm. Now, these type of jobs are highly flexible for the workers and drivers, but it can be extremely stressful and sometimes dangerous, right, if they risk violating traffic laws to make sure fast delivery to get good reviews. Um, and also they are making multiple deliveries at the same time to multiple people. So they are exposed to various people along the way. Um, and it's safety risk. Now for indoor delivery, such as in the restaurants, we are seeing the advanced use of robotics, serving food to the tables from the kitchen. Uh, for outdoor delivery, you know, as Tim, as Tim presented, drones will be used extensively either by itself or together with other multi-mode transportation for areas that cannot be reached like in the mountain area. Mm -hmm. And in some countries, it has already commercialized successfully. Uh, I know in the US, Uber has gotten license to pilot something. And these are trends that um, that we will, we cannot avoid. Um, the, the trend is moving, and it will just move faster than uh, than before, right? Right, right. So, and Tim, do you have any like additional comments to make? Oh, and uh, as my presentation, and uh, I think uh, in, in Taiwan, uh, I think uh, autonomous vehicle is the uh, is now is we improve. And uh, the second one, and uh, we now, we hopefully and uh, develop and the drone, the drone, use the drone and uh, yeah, to drone. for the logistic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I think uh, this is in the future. I, I know in uh, Korea and uh, 2025, and uh, there will be have a uh, UAM. UAM is uh, like the air taxi, air taxi. Yeah, so I think for some of the uh, autonomous vehicle and the autonomous drone, and uh, in the future, and they will be uh, be uh, be kind of important role in the logistic. So okay, yeah. right. So if we like uh, summarize the business and logistics of post COVID nineteen era, the panelists have mentioned um, that so there will be more of AI and data driven opportunities. And due to the like change in consumption habits, so the way of living, there will be more direct to customers, D two C platforms, and virtual world, obviously in post COVID nineteen era, and even different modes of transportation that you have mentioned and delivery services will be more introduced in what we become like a new normal. So um, then, let us move to the next questions in here. So this is the question that I've asked. So what is the open data that will be most needed in after Corona era? And here, like Oh Hyun um, from Korea has mentioned the safety relay data and short-term works. 
and related policies and work history data should be released. And can you elaborate more? So like government of Korea has released overall studies of confirmed cases and mass sales data and public welfare support data um, to the data portal so far. And then can you just explain more on your idea? Uh, yes, but yeah, just I want to share my idea. Yeah, okay. yeah obviously, yeah, safety related data will be more needed to protect yeah, by ourselves and by self. Yeah, I think. And one more thing I think I'm very worried about decline of economy will result in massive loss of jobs. So in short, uh, many people will start to find short-term jobs and some data related, uh, data related directly in a living, I think. Yeah, that's my idea. Yeah. Oh, okay, then um, let us move to the Isago's idea that he has mentioned like more detailed real time point of interest data. And can you explain more on this? Yeah, it's not so many because it's hard to consolidate and uh, maintenance uh, data source in real time. But I can introduce one example which is provided through the government seal portal in Japan. Okay. Uh, GMIS, Gathering Medical Information System on COVID-19, mm -hmm. is a list of hospitals with rich metadata, including available capacity and equipment and staffs. It's highly useful to grasp the status of hospital in Japan at, uh, at, at a glance by the map view. And uh, all of data is also available as an open data. Through the experience of COVID-19, I expect that this kind of fresh open data maintained by the government will be the new standard. That's my idea. Oh, okay. And okay. there is a, like a comments from the Slido regarding the data transparency. So mm -hmm. it's really important to keep trust between citizens and government. So um, does like any of speakers have any good examples of data transparency in your country? Mm. So perhaps like um, mm. Isako, can you like uh, able to answer the questions? Or we will just uh, get back yeah. to you later. Maybe uh, in Japan there is not so much, but uh, in Taiwan, uh, maybe much better than <clears throat> Japan. How do you think about Japan, including mask data or something? Yes, in the, in Taiwan, the, the open data is developing by our government, which is the Ministry of the Health and the Warfare. So, and the, 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 the older society will update the data or help the government to manage the open data. So I think, this is very helpful if, if the government and the society to keep the data transparency. Mm, right, right. So um, then um, let me move to the next sticky notes that Tim from Taiwan has made. So he has mentioned like crowd mobility information and like um, same in Korea, like summer vacation season has come and government of Korea actually like, adopted reservation system for like a Korean beach. So they will be actually like a showing crowd intensity status of like each beach using telecom company information. And how, how about in Taiwan? So do you, can you share some ideas? Uh, I seen um, uh, during the COVID-19 and uh, for right. Taiwan uh, public transportation. And uh, I think uh, they just have the uh, 40% of the reduce of, of the passenger. And most of the people and uh, they like, drive the scooter and uh, they have the, uh, they drive the car. So it make a lot of the traffic jam in Taiwan and uh, in Taiwan. So uh, a lot of people they drive their car and uh, they drive their motorcycle and uh, so my company is in Nehu area, so always traffic jam uh, during this time. I think maybe uh, after the COVID nineteen, and the people will be trusted to uh, to take the uh, public transportation, and uh, we can have uh, some of the information have the real time public transport 
public transportation and crowd and crowd mobility information on the bus. So we, we can understand uh, why is the real time the subway and why is the real time the bus uh, already have crowded or the, uh, it's empty. Uh, and that is the, it's a good information to make the passenger to decide to get in the bus or uh, the, uh, transfer to other, other transportation. So I think um, in, in Taiwan now, in our subway already have the, this information to show everyone and everyone can to understand and what part of the uh, subway is crowded and the, what of the subway is the empathy. Yeah, so they, they can make a good choice. Right, it's really right. important to share those information to contain the virus so far. And now um, right. let us move to the third questions that I've asked. So um, I've asked like, what do you expect from government for the collaboration since like all the panelists tonight have collaborated with the government as a representative from the private sector. And can you also some like share some difficulties that you have encountered while you're working with the government as well? So uh, Michael has mentioned in here that like a fresh, accurate and real time location data and Isago actually has agreed on it. So can you two just um, share some of your thoughts to the viewers? Yeah, sure, uh, Hei Jong. So um, as a map data content provider for almost 30 years and uh, we, we believe any kind of uh, data and content to be to be useful and valuable, right? It must be, we need to meet four dimensions. It must be rich in features. It must have wide coverage in the real world. Uh, it must be accurate in terms of accuracy. And most importantly, it must be fresh and updated frequently. Now to create a set of data, whether is it open or paid, it is very easy from the start. Um, but to maintain it throughout the entire data lifespan is extremely expensive and difficult. So new data are streaming in almost every second from every devices, hardware, connected car, public infrastructure. So we need to look at the overall quality and the business and social value of this data that we are sharing openly. And I'm talking about high quality open data sharing to private sectors so that we can benefit both each other mutually and also transform good solutions for the citizens. And we always believe that you know, no one company or government departments can do it by themselves. And that's where I think you know, partnerships, collaborations between public sector and private sectors is always key, right? Because public sectors have the depth and breadth of all these city infrastructure data and uh, private sectors have the technologies and we can move fast. And I think this is a good marriage between both to really, you know, enhance the data as we go along um, because the world is constantly changing. So I believe the fresh, accurate data is very critical, especially when, you know, to deal with a pandemic like now, right? So, right, so that's, right. uh, that's my, my two cents for, for this. And um, Isago, do you have any additional comment on that? Uh, yeah, no doubt, totally agree with the idea. And uh, uh, freshness and accuracy of data is important in every kind of uh, base registries. But in real, it's very hard to get the fresh data from government. So it might be the role of private sector, I think. Okay. And then so Isago also like uh, put a note on their like uh, paperless and Hanko, Hanko means like Japanese yeah, 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 Japan. <laughs> stamp. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. so like a stamp less. So, um, I read an article that like a um this uh, makes like a challenge for Japan for the remote working. Yeah, so yeah, can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, can you just share like elaborate more on the notes that you put in there? Yeah, uh, I don't know you guys that uh, uh, very uh, know about the, the program about Hanko stamp. But the uh, uh, stamp tradition is still very active in Japan. And uh, I, I read an article that this put more working in challenge. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Uh, okay, let me say, uh, some key persons in Japanese government mentioned about the uh, issues of stamp and uh, now, uh, now it's not needed to put someone's seal on the paper of contract partially, 
But considering the business practice and the culture, stamp is still needed, especially around the public sector contract. If we can throw away the business practice of stamp, uh, line up and many, many kind of uh, services will become more useful for performing the procedures in the digital world. We can provide EKYC, uh, electric know your customer services, uh, using face recognition and uh, AI or share technologies. Right, so it, it's just my like a personal question. Yeah, yeah. So how yeah, about yeah. like in line corporation, do you like embrace remote working in uh, your yeah, company? Yeah, 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 of course. Oh, and okay, you do. It's, it's ongoing, yeah. Oh, all right. So then um, let me move back to the Taiwan, like Tim. So he has put a note on citizen data use policy. And can you like then share like the current policy of Taiwan for citizen data use? And what do you think would make the policy better, Tim? Okay, thank you. Um, I think uh, for the COVID-19, and uh, we use a lot of the uh, personal data like the cellular data. And uh, when we go to the company and uh, go to the government, uh, we need to sign a paper and uh, via my name and uh, my ID card and uh, my cell phone and all of the my personal data to, uh, uh, I need to write the, the information to them. So I, I think after COVID-19 and uh, we, don't, uh, we don't understand, we, we don't have a discussion about and uh, it's easy to get the data after the COVID-19 because then the, all the data is uh, private data. So um, after COVID-19, we need to have some uh, discussion about after the data use policy and when we can get the data and the, what kind of the situation we can use the data and the, who can use the data and how to use the data. and. The, where can use the data. I think we need to have uh, some of the policy and uh, if we face the other, uh, the other uh, crime, crimes and uh, we have the policy can be a bad, yeah. So I, this is what we think and uh, after the COVID-19 and uh, we need to discuss about more about this. Right, right. Yeah. So there should be like an improvement to the policy as well. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. And let me move back to the Ohyun from Korea that here, like in the green memo. So he has mentioned the like support to citizen driven project and communities. And also he made a memo on the data governance and collaboration process with our citizens. And I remember that in the first webinar, so Hal Seki from Japan, actually he has mentioned the COVID-19 webpage, which was built by like civic hackers. So very at the, from the beginning, there was this great collaborations with our citizens and hackers and government all together. So and then, then Ohyun, do you have any like ideas in Korea or your personal thoughts on it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I heard that. Yeah. From her. <laughs> right. Yes. We have good uh, examples and borders already in Japan and Taiwan and also in Korea. I think. Yeah. Code for Japan, Gov Zero, and Code for Korea. Yeah. Uh, and I think our government can provide more rooms and opportunities to citizens to develop and experiment many projects to overcome our situations. Like I said, uh, good open data and good open infrastructure can help more citizens to participate in civic hacking projects. And many good ideas experimented by citizens can be a good uh, social enterprise, I think, later. So I expect we can make this uh, new growing route uh, from citizens' idea to a good social enterprise or social good. Uh, organizations to benefit or our society, I think so. Okay, so right. Uh, if uh, I'm like summarizing the government collaboration part, so our panelists um, have shared ideas for promoting more efficient public private partnership that like accurate and fresh real-time location of data should be more released by the government. 
and policy for citizens data use should be modified so that like uh, granting more power to the citizens and there should be like more citizen driven projects and community with the support of the government and um i also think like for the partnership to be very successful the relationship must be built on deep trust by perhaps like adopting more open source approach and embedding the partner into executive um, efficiently. And now um, let me move to the, our very final work in here. So this is linked to the like uh, um, 2020 Asia Data Open Challenge that is going on right now. So I've asked for ideas for contact lens technologies in here. And so Ohyun from Korea, so he, in here, he has made so many memos in here. So, and then can you tell us uh, more of your ideas in here? Yeah, I, I'm interested in new normal and basic rights of human in contactless era. So to connect the net should be, I think, basic rights of the human in this era, I think. And in digital world, uh, there should be more uh, freely accessible contents we can enjoy even if you don't have enough money so and these contents can also be the basic rights of the human in digital era i think okay all right and then let me move to the, the next memo in here um isago has made a like face recognition based payment but i guess line is already um on the process uh, yes, uh, now we can provide face recognition technology, not only for EKYC, but for general purpose. It's really interesting technology, especially in East Asia, because of US-China conflict. Oh, right, right. The big, yeah, the big tech in United States become negative to provide face recognition technologies, considering recognition bias and the pri privacy matters. But uh, in China, Face recognition is embedded in the, the infrastructure and the society to watch everyone's behavior. So benchmarking of United States and China is no use for us. We have to find the, the suitable way to um, uh, suitable way by ourselves. It's an exciting field to tackle. And the uh, face sign based payment will be the killer, uh, killer use case because the uh, UX is so smart. So, yeah, that's that's my idea. Uh, all right. Yeah. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, Tim uh, made a memo on the surrogate and clone technology in here, which I found very interesting. And can you share some uh, of your ideas yeah. in here? Okay, yes, it, it, I, I think it's a crazy idea. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I think for some of the people, and uh, you know, uh, uh, the movie is called uh, Strong Cats. And I think it's the it's an old movie, but uh, the actor is the Bruce Wade. And the Bruce Wade, and uh, he stayed at home, and uh, he put a, a device on his hand. And uh, he had an agent, he had a strong cat, and uh, they can do a lot of business and uh, outside. So you can control the agent and uh, he can do the business and uh, he can shop in and uh, he can do anything for you. So you have another agent like you and uh, he can do anything but you just stay at home. Uh, I think this is the, uh, this is the just uh, movie say. Um, but uh, for real life, uh, I think just as the Michael, say, uh, Michael mentioned, I think the uh, Virtual contact will be had uh, uh, it, it will be realized, and, uh, and maybe just uh, we 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 stay in different uh, different area, and uh, we put on a VR glass, and uh, we just uh, turn turn right, and uh, we can say Michael stay uh, sit in my in my in my right side, and uh, we can say hello to Michael. Yeah, I, I think it's the uh, it's uh, now the technology is already be happen and uh, in the future 5g is where uh, will be will be going in the future and uh, i think now has a technology sooner uh, can be uh, act in the same stage but different sooner maybe in the taiwan in korea in japan and the different sooner they can be 
stay in the same, uh, like maybe stay in a different country, but they can sing uh, in some uh, in 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 same stage. We use the five G technology. We can we can make it come true. So I, I think uh, for the for the for the new future and uh, the idea will be uh, will be uh, getting true. Uh, that's why I'm my idea. Yes. Yeah, I guess like yeah, I guess we are like, gonna see what we have seen from the movies in reality in very near future. <laughs> Yes, yes. So, all right. So that would be like all for the panel discussion on the mural that you have worked. So, is there any last comments from any panelists tonight? Well, I guess no. So, um, thank you so much for your work and ideas for the tonight, and I really appreciate. Um, and I hope there will be like more opportunities for us to gather like virtually once again and develop insights in the near future again. And just for the viewers, um, we have some information for you. So this mural, um, we'll be sharing the URL for this mural, and anyone can just jump in here and leave their comments from any countries in the world. So we will have some more ideas from the viewers, and we can just develop more into it. So feel free to join us all the time. So for the panelists, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Hei Jong. Thank right, you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 So, um, alright. So before I officially like kick off, um um finish this webinar, um, I would like to share some slides with you regarding the 2020 Asia Open Data Challenge that's going on right now. Okay, so 2020 Asia Open Data Challenge. So it's like online registration is on. So in order to strengthen in-depth exchange and cooperation of data applications among Asia countries, um, with the government's open data as the main access, 2020 Asia Open Data Challenge will be jointly held by Taiwan, Japan, and Korea. So who can join? So basically anyone, like group of students and developers, and startups or business like whoever ready to impress us with brilliant ideas are welcome to join. And so under the theme of open data in smart life in after Corona era that which we discussed pretty much tonight. So you are free to create any possible application with the use of multi countries open data and data provided by here technologies. So um, up to 5,100 US dollars for the winners will be awarded. And most importantly, like fruitful exchange of ideas with developers from different countries um, will be given to the participants. Um, so actually like uh, starting on June 15, um, there is an online registration going on and it will be end on July 27. So we have like a 20 more days to join us. And right after that, um, there will be a preliminary selection announcements that's um, going to take a place on August 12th. And the final competition and award ceremony will be virtually held on August 28th with three countries, Taiwan, Japan, and Korea. And what are the criteria for the um, Asia Open Data Partnership of this year? So first, 20% um, will be multi-country applications and open data utilization and creativity and technical difficulty and feasibility. And lastly, business viability will be um, evaluated in the preliminary selections. And um, as I mentioned before, that here technologists will be um, with us tonight. I mean, uh, so they will be sponsoring for the $1,500 for the special award for the HERE Technology Award in partnership. So if you have any additional questions or concerns on anything with the webinar that was held um, in today and the Asia Open Data Partnership, so feel free to email us anytime. So I hope to see you once again in our 2020 Asia Open Data Challenge. And thank you so much for joining tonight. I hope everyone would have a rest of a good night. Thank you.